A bill to ban the use of electricity generating sets in Nigeria passed first reading at the Senate plenary on Wednesday. The bill, sponsored by Bima Inagi, senator representing Niger South, is proposing a ban on the use of electric generators in the country. It also seeks to ban the import of all kinds of generators into Nigeria. The bill proposes a minimum of 10 years of jail term for anyone who imports or sells generator in Nigeria. It states that anyone who imports generating sets or knowingly sells generating sets shall be guilty of an offence and be liable on conviction to be sentenced to imprisonment of a term not less than 10 years. It added that all persons who are hereby directed to stop the use of electricity generating sets which run on diesel, petrol, kerosene of all capacity with immediate effect in the country. The bill, however, makes provision for the use of generators for essential services. Such essential services must obtain permit from the Minister of Power. Essential services, according to the bill, include medical purposes, hospitals and nursing homes and healthcare facilities, airports and railways. Joining us in the studio is our public interest lawyer, Bernard Oniga. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Is this one way to compel the needed change in the power sector, this outright ban on generating sets as proposed uh, by the senator? Yeah, um, the senator from Niger South Senatorial Dis District um, did propose this bill. I understand with him, you know, even though when I went on social media, people were bashing him. Of course, there are other things to look at, but I understand with him to some extent. You know, so he feels, and it is his opinion as a lawmaker, that if we ban generators, that we could begin to look inwards. It is one of the many options, looking inwards. But you do. But is it feasible in the current real power reality? It is not feasible, of course. It is not feasible in any way. That means that the economy will be shut down. It's not possible. We rely on alternative sources of power, e.g., generators, diesel, and petrol generators. That is what runs our power sector. Our public power sector is in comatose. You know, even the privatization arrangement that was done, you saw what happened. It was just an RNG arrangement. So it has not given us the, desires, the desired results. So what Senator uh, Emagi is, is, is proposing is for us to attempt to cure the symptom of a disease as against curing or rather eradicating the virus that is causing the disease. It will not work. It is not feasible, you know. And that is why sometimes, too, we advise politicians to come and experience life from our own end. When they do, they might likely be able to appreciate what the average Nigerian goes through. All right, um, I'm told we have on the telephone another guest, Kayode Ekudayo, he's the executive editor, Energy Times. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I, I, I'll I'll repeat the same question that I just uh, gave uh, to Bennett, and it is that, is this one way to compel a change in the power sector, the needed change, or just an unfeasible uh, idea in a power distribution reality that is in Nigeria? Thank you very much. I think it's a, it's a strong, uh, a wrong, wrong way to have started to push us out of the comatose we are here. Honestly, it's a wrong way by the legislator to have make a move that importation of generators should be banned at this time. As a, as a brother said there, uh, we need to first of all kill the virus before we kill the disease. What we have now is that the state of our power sector is a near collapse. And there is no way we can say we are banning generator importation without finding alternative. Yeah, but well, because, some would say, some would, let me play the devil's advocate here. Some would say that yes. um, drastic situation requires drastic measures it's to not, find solutions. You can't, you can't take... You can't take a drastic situation with power. Power is the main fight by force on which the way of businesses rotates, even life. If you go to hospital without power, 
most of our uh, hospitals today rely on self-generated power. So if you are saying that, even if, if we look at even the importation, it's, 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 a, it's a big problem for even the consumers. Because they spent a lot of money importing this, even when you buy from the market. Servicing is a lot. Buy this, buy all sorts of things. You know, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not good for us. We all right, let, let, let's, let, let's consider for a moment that this bill yeah. does go forward. It's 10 years, I'll come to you, Bennett. Yeah. It's 10 years to stiff a penalty uh, for someone uh, to be um, punished for doing. Uh, there is no cause for punishing anybody here. You are talking of um, Nigerians being in an absolutely preca precarious situation, which was engineered and caused by the federal government or by the government at all levels, power has become, it has left the executive leave, um, list. That means state governments and individuals too can invest in the power sector. Um, President Olusegun Obasanjo, if I recall, claimed to have invested 16 billion, that is in US dollars, not in Naira, in the power sector. I do not know how much America did invest or countries like Russia or other developed nations or, or even smaller African nations that do have stable power. I do not know, but I, do, I am not sure that they, they would have invested up to $16 billion. Now, I have made this point oftentimes, which is the fact that, you know, the trajectory of our development is not that we are trying to be innovative. It is rather that we are attempting, or rather we are having difficulty in implementing or executing already existing technology. So somebody somewhere invented power, other nations have built on it, Germany is doing very well in alternative and renewable energy, and just for us to take this energy or sources of energy and implement, but we still import everything, you know, all of the power equipments we still implement, imp import them, have um, our technicians install them, and have stable power is a problem for us. That is even the trajectory of the development of Nigeria. And power is at the foundation of development, you know. And so when Senator um, Emagi is proposing this, the simple question is that you should have an internal alternative for you to be able to ban the importation of generators, exactly. Um, uh, Makayode, let me ask you, what bothers you the most about this bill? What worries me most? What, yes, what bothers you the most about this bill? Every, everything about the bill worried me. Is it the 10-year jail? Is it banning the import, importation? It's not even something that a Nigerian should even propose at this time. It's a, it's a worrisome situation. Because, you see, some of these legislators, I'm sorry to say, they don't feel the pulse of Nigerians in the, in, the, in the community, in the villages. There is no light. Okay, let me give you a situation. Just last week, Sunday, a TCN says there was no gas for power to be generated. And they will, they, there won't be, and this thing will happen for 10 days. Assuming we don't have generator for 10 days, what will happen? And the system, the infrastructures are not there. We are not even sure what year we will have the stability of power supply. And somebody is coming up to say that whoever imports generator will go to jail for 10 years. That is an insane statement. That is an insane it's a bill. There, there's been reactions, expectedly. One in particular caught my attention, similar to what you were saying. But there is uh, something he said that I'd like to uh, pick your brain on. Uh, simple economics. That's what the person tweeted. When electricity become, uh, became constant in Ghana, generator importation became senseless. Policies like this only question our education system. That's what he said. Now, how possible is it that we can up our game enough to allow the import and sale of generating sets die a natural debt just like it happened in Ghana? I can't pick your question, but a little I, I picked there. Yeah, he's talking about diversion of funds to education, health, 
No, 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 that, that's, um, that's uh, not um, uh, what I was trying to, but did you, let me, let me, I will come back to you in a bit, Kennedy. Um, what do you make okay. of that? Uh, what, what, can we do that? Uh, of course, it's, it's very simple. It, it does, it, it's, it's a, it's a no-brainer here, you know, except that um, um, it's worrisome. The nature, kind, and the capacity of lawmakers we have is becoming very worrisome. Like Kayo, they said, everything, even the heading of the bill, if I just imagining such a, a thought is, is, is insulting on the average Nigerian, to be honest with you, telling us to burden it. And then, you know, if you go back again to read, it says, oh, um, licenses will be given to certain persons or special privileges will be given to certain persons. And I laughed. I said, oh, so this is just another opportunity for our politicians and those in the in the bourgeoisie to continue to trample on the average Nigerian. So that means that hey, I'm sure every politician in Nigeria would be able to assess a generator license, apparently. That is what it means. And then you and I will begin to grapple um, as to whether or not. And so I do not know the intentions of this bill, but it doesn't seem to be in the interest of Nigerians in any way. Like I said, it is absolutely insulting on um, and demeaning, you know, on the average Nigerian. And uh, like I said, there's something I was trying to say, which is the fact that government, our government has a way of putting its failures back, transferring the burden of the failure of governance back to the people, unfortunately. You know, that seemed to be what is playing out. You have a government that is responsible for controlling border. It doesn't do that. Because it has failed in controlling borders, it just makes a unilateral decision, locks up the economy, and closes the border. You have a government that is supposed to provide stable power for us. It's not doing that. We do not have a choice but to rely on um, alternative sources of power, such as generators, which is, the, which, is, which is what is keeping our economy, you know. I don't know if Senator Maggi knows this, but somebody should tell him that if we ban generators, Nigeria will collapse, our economy will collapse, production will collapse, you know. And then somebody is also now saying we should ban the use of generators and then grant special privileges to certain persons. Come on, come oh, on, come on. Okay, come let's, on. let's uh, still take a uh, reaction. Karade, are you with us? Hello? Hello. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm coming to you with this question. Um, there, there's been a very high negative response to the social media bill. There was also an outcry yeah. about the immunity um, uh, bill as well that was sought by the National Assembly. Um, do you yeah. see similar reaction? tough reactions against this bill and, and will it um, uh, translate to the House maybe eventually discarding the bill? I don't really know what is wrong with our legislators. That they will just come up with something that is not popular. How can you say you want to, you want to ban social media? Can you imagine that kind of a thing? You see, the world is evolving. Technology is all over the place. Now, look at the way things are doing now. Even what we are doing now, we can be watching it on, 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 on Facebook. Now, let's say now that somebody now pick a story from what we are saying now, we put it on Facebook. Is it not helping your business? Is it not helping your company? Okay, I'm, yes, I'm actually asking, I'm actually asking um, um, uh, that the reaction to social media bill, do you see similar mm. reaction to this bill? And will it no, cost you, the you, Senate cannot, to... you cannot. No, you cannot get the same reaction. Because this is life. Social media is not life. If you say you are banning generator, you are threatening people's life. So with uh, social media, it's not the same. Okay, um, uh, let me ask you, how can we influence better decision-making and bills from the National Assembly? Because apparently, both of you don't seem to agree with this one. Yeah, it goes down to the quality of lawmakers we elect, the quality of lawmakers we elect. When we do away with money politics, when we begin to look at the content of people's character, rather than what they have to offer us at, at the immediate instance, then we would begin to have better lawmaking. I do not know, to be honest, and with all due respect, the side of the bed that Mr. Bima must have woken up the morning in which he decided to uh, propose such a bill, but apparently he didn't wake up on the right side of the bed because this bill is not in the interest of the average Nigerian. But let me not fail to tell you this. You know, you know, you know we are second-hand users of technology in this country. We have a ministry dedicated to science and technology 
we do not take research seriously in Nigeria. And so when we want to say these things, these are these are other areas we even begin to look at. So we are we are like I said, we are secondary users of technology and we cannot even adopt this technology properly for our enjoyment, you know. So that bill is in fact we, 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 we do not need to protest it. It will die a natural death. I think other senators know better. Not thank to, you very much, Bennett, for your you thoughts know. on you. this. And of course, Kayode, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.